Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Alexi Miller, and we're on today with Greg Abbott, Global Head of Travel and Hospitality Practice with DateArt. Hey, Greg, how are you? Good morning, Alexi. I'm well. How are you? I know, I know travel and tra hospitality industry is heavily hit with this crisis. So, first of all, thanks for finding time to talk to us. I know you and the rest of the industry are putting fires 24-7. So we're, we're going to ask you a few questions about the fires, but hopefully also how things come out on the other end of this. So to start with the obvious, we, we all understand that no one's traveling and the travel industry broadly is suffering enormous losses. Can you put it uh, down to numbers for us? What's the impact has been so far in the industry and more specifically on travel tech? Well, thanks, Alexi, uh, and thanks for giving us the opportunity to chat a little bit about the industry. We we love to talk these days because uh, we try to find new adjectives about uh, just how bad things have gotten. We we jest in the industry a little bit about how quickly it's almost become illegal to travel. So, let's start with the 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 numbers because it's uh, fairly grim uh, when uh, you know passenger traffic is ninety five percent down, hotel occupancy is about the same, ninety five percent down year over year. Um, um, flight capacities have been substantially reduced. So while well, you might have had lots of options before uh, to take flights, if you did want to fly, uh, the capacity is down 70 to 80 percent. Um, you know, large, uh, there's two large components of travel, both business and leisure. Uh, leisure, of course, evaporated quickly, but business travel was a little bit more resilient because people still needed to kind of finish up some of the trips they were doing and companies didn't have their positions set very quickly. And uh, so business travel, though, as we've started to, the dust has started to settle a little bit, we see 97% uh, down year over year. They were largely call center based organizations that were serving. And so a lot of them have had a real uh, difficulty in shifting and work from home. And it's been a, a rough uh, four to six weeks uh, figuring out where the bottom is. The good news is I think we've reached the bottom. <laughs> and now conversations have started to talk about what recovery uh, looks like. And so, and hopefully some of your questions will start to allude to that. But that's where we're at now is we've all kind of said, okay, it's decimated. Now what? I saw a quote somewhere from United Airlines CEO who said that the demand for flying right now is essentially zero. So, yeah, it's probably hard to argue that we have indeed hit the bottom and the only way from there is is up. Uh, well, I, I'm just curious on the personal level, even though no one is flying today, are people still booking trips for next year, late fall, next winter? You know, is there traffic on Expedia? Do, does the industry know anything about that? Well, um, we are a resilient and hopeful bunch, and uh, travel is something that draws people. It's it's kind of innate in us to want to see the world. So, yeah, people are dreaming. Uh, cruise lines um, are talking about uh, 2021 bookings. Um, certainly what you've seen is the industry as a whole has started to – uh, implement a lot more flexibility in travel planning uh, as a response to this. So a lot of the airlines have come out and they've said, look, if you're booking for future, we'll waive changes, we'll be much more flexible. Uh, and I think the response to that has started to, again, get, get people imagining traveling again. And that's a good thing. So yeah, we are seeing an uptick in future bookings. Do you see activity in travel tech? Are people or companies still investing with the caveat that the present and perhaps future are, are uncertain, but is it generally a good time to refresh technology? It's a great question. So, and it's really um, time sensitive. So at the initial onset of the crisis, it was a lot of firefighting. Uh, everybody's call volumes were up significantly. And, um, you know, the the fight was how resilient can our systems be? How, how can we handle the volume that has uh, sort of, unfortunately, a ca cancellation volume? So one of the very first things that we started working on with some of our clients was how to handle queuing of cancellation and how to take some of the manual uh, components of cancellation and, and automate those things. So it was kind of building under crisis uh, and really being flexible and quick and, and resilient in uh, response to the situation. Again, as the dust has started to settle, what you have is um, those that are in a cash position to be able to invest or who were able to quickly convert to um, some amount of uh, liquidity for their businesses are seizing the opportunity to um, we have this 
this expression, you can't change the engine in the plane while it's flying. Well, the planes aren't flying. And I'm not talking about the physical planes themselves, but I'm talking about the technology under the hood uh, for a lot of the distribution and inventory systems that are out there. And so those companies that are in a stronger cash position are already, already talking about how to leverage um, some of their legacy modernization projects and convert to you know what we call cloudified projects, really to build in systems that are uh, resilient, um, that are easily scaled up and brought down when needed, um, and can respond to uh, situations like this uh, better in the future. You've mentioned those in the cash position. I understand that if they, that having access to to capital is a huge factor in determining who gets out in better shape out of this. What about uh, financing for early stage travel tech companies, which was my understanding a booming sector until very recently is, are those conversations still happening and new financing deals uh, still being discussed or everything is on deep freeze? Uh, good question. So we did see things go uh, pause. <laughs> uh, conversations have started. There's, um, you know, we recently held a, a, a webinar to really continue to engage in the community, both at the startup level, mid and large uh, scale companies. And each has a bit of a different position depending on where they're at. Um, those companies that were in the middle of seed rounds, a lot of times have paused them just because um, until things start to uh, normalize, I, I wouldn't say get back to normal, but start to normalize a lot of the um, a lot of the private equity firms have paused and they're talking about you know quarter four or early 2021 for things to loosen up but I think <clears throat> right now everybody's looking at how recovery how how steep the recovery curve will be or how how relatively flat the recovery curve will be on the subject of recovery I know there's been a bunch of interesting conversations internally th about travel industry being, sort of united in, in ways that were not realistic before with healthcare and, and then travel and healthcare will kind of go head and hand in hand. Can you talk about that? What, what do you see happening? What kind of healthcare features being uh, discussed with relation to future of travel? Yeah, good question. Um, so one, you know, one of the advantages of working at DateArt is watching other uh, verticals and other sectors respond to this. And so um, the, the industry itself, I'll, I'll back up just a little bit. And the industry itself has really had a, a tremendous outpouring in this time of crisis of really trying to adopt and help in the situation. So, you know, um, airlines response to first uh, those on the front line and first responders giving them free travel and hotels opening up for uh, for those on the front lines, being able to have free places to stay, convention centers co converting to hospitals. To hospitals overnight, right? Uh, you've seen lots of that response, and that's kind of drawn the travel community that was all um, dispersed in their own sort of growth trajectories, uh, really drawn us together, and everybody's in this together. And I think maybe that's even beyond the travel industry globally. But one of the things that started to percolate was, okay, well, how do we get back to a sense of normalcy with this sort of indication that it was going to take 18 months for a vaccine or maybe even longer? And, you know, everybody's saying that that would be the only the, the underpinning sort of uh, event that would bring travel back in a, in a strong way. Um, and so a lot of the, the thought leaders started gathering around the concept of, uh, of how med tech um, and really looking at gates and ports in a new way and and I'll I'll talk about this and as a, using 911 as an analogy but it was really around how to bring safety and security back into the psychology of travelers right and TSA was sort of the response to that and so now it's a, a different type of battle a different type of enemy and it's that psychology of having um, security of health as you travel and so you see some response like Emirates Airlines who's always on the front line of adoption you know looking at medical testing before flights um, and we we have been uh, chatting with a number of the providers in terms of prov who who provide, um, let's say, fast lane uh, kiosk uh, technology in the industry um, to think creatively about how it might uh, uh, tie in with um, healthcare systems to look at uh, preventative measures, um, you know, that would suppress the spread or uh, allow for quick response response when there's an indication of an event in a particular location and how they might respond to those things. So 
the short the the long I guess the short answer to my long <laughs> monologue there is that I believe without um, a doubt that there will be a tie-in between uh, med tech and travel tech in the coming future. Lots to discover and lots to do there. And to finish, personal question: When we can travel, where will you go first? Well, we, my family has hopes uh, of its uh, late summer vacation uh, to the South Pacific. We will see if that happens. <laughs> it's, uh, you haven't, so, haven't canceled September. yet? Haven't canceled yet. Keep Keeping the fingers crossed. We'll see if that happens. Uh, well, I really if, hope, hope it does. If a person running a large travel and hospitality technology practice is not canceling his late summer, early fall vacation in South Pacific. There's certainly hope in the industry. Thanks for chatting, Greg. I appreciate it, Lexi. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you.